What'd you uh, learn by playing under Doug Peterson? Um, Doug's, Doug's a great, great person. He's a great football coach. Um, you know, he sees he sees the game through the quarterback's eyes, being an ex quarterback. So that was always great. To, uh, his meetings were, were, you know, very detailed. So I, I love playing for Doug. Wondell back out on the field this week. Yeah, Wondell did a nice job. It's good to see him. Um, obviously, bounce around, having some fun. Um, and, you know, obviously, you see him practice too. So was, he did a nice job. What does that do with uh, to Richie James and, and the playing time there? I know you say guys like to go inside out, so those guys are primarily slot guys. Though. Yeah, I mean, every every week at practice, we'll evaluate and try to put those guys in the best spots to be successful. Um, so, you know, we'll work through that throughout the game plan in really all the areas, you know, situationally, first, second down, um, and then and then mix them in and mix and match with all the other personnel groupings that we have. So it's still it's still developing. We've still got a few days here to tighten up the game plan, but we're working through that. Like Bellinger blocked <clears throat> more so than caught the Sorry, ball. Sandy. The Bellinger blocked a lot more than he caught the ball in college. When did you realize he could be more than just a guy who was a blocker and, and you could go to him? Yeah, you know, I think you, you saw a little bit of it on tape. Um, you saw a little bit in the workouts and stuff. And then our scouting department and Joe did a great job of, of finding him and um, targeting him. And you know, he, you know, we're, we're glad we have him. We can develop him, and he, you can see how he's getting better each and every day. You see a better athlete than you thought he. I think you saw the you saw the athleticism on tape in, in his pro day, um, so that wasn't surprising. You know, and then you put it on the field and kind of integrate him into the offense, and you you see how uh, how well the fit he was. It's a little bit easier to, I mean, you can see when you draft a tight end, you can sometimes draft a guy that has the receiving skills automatically. You have to teach him to block or the reverse of it, where like here you've got a kid who knew how to block in college and didn't teach him how to catch. Is there an easier route to go? Like, is it, is it generally a little bit easier to learn how to, to run the routes and, and be a weapon in the passing oh, game? I, see what you're um, I don't know if I'd say that. I think, I think Coach Bischoff does a great job with all the tight ends and, um, and developing them and trying to, you know, figure out their strengths, figure out their weaknesses. Whatever those strengths are, build on that. Um, you know, with, with the weaknesses that show up, you know, continue to work through those and, and put them in a good spot so that that you know those weaknesses aren't as um, as shown as much. So, and Coach Bishop does a great job. He spends a ton of time with those guys, and and the players buy into it. So, you know, that's that's why we're here is to help our guys get better in any way we can. Mike, Mike all, all offenses obviously evolve over time. Just mm -hmm. how much. How, how cumulative is your offense like for, to build from mm -hmm. from one week to the next, one even mm -hmm. one year to the next as, as we move forward? Sure, there's there's a lot of carryover in a week to week. I mean, you only you know you only play 60 to 70 snaps a game, so a lot of those plays <clears throat> that you rep in practice, you maybe you don't run it, you don't call it, you get another rep of it the next week, and so you can kind of bank mm -hmm. some of those plays over the first you know few weeks of the season and carry over. And if it fits, then we use it. And if it doesn't fit, then Maybe we put it on the shelf for a week or two and then bring it back when we feel like it's uh, it's a good fit for the team we're playing. How much in these six weeks has it kind of altered? Maybe you came in <clears throat> April thinking we're going to run this, and now you're, you're in October and you're running a different thing. How sure. much does that happen? <clears throat> I think the first the first three weeks of the season was a lot, a lot of good carryover. Then as you kind of go through those first few weeks, you run a pretty high percentage of them. And so you know, weeks two and weeks three, you're kind of replacing the ones you use with new ones or new thoughts, and it kind of just like a revolving process that way, where you know maybe it's um, a new action pass or new movement or screen or something like that. So um, maybe you call one of them one week, you, you and then you look for the next complement the next week. Like, where did you learn the importance of marrying concepts together in your offense so that you can like get to a certain place different ways? Yeah, uh, I I'd, I'd say um, when I was with uh, Coach Reed. You know, when I started coaching with Coach Reed, um, he was he was big on that, of showing certain looks, showing formations, certain plays, then complementing those looks off of um, off of the action or of a personnel grouping. So that that wasn't that was important to learn that, um, and you know I think that's probably where it started for me is how do you build that? How do you build off of those plays or things that you've shown in weeks before to then you know bring up in a game that maybe the defense is kind of anticipating. When it comes to like trick plays or some of those sort of I don't know if there are plays you guys have run. Do you come in saying we're, when we get in this situation we're going to run it, or is as the game's going like you just like oh this is the time to do it? Um, <clears throat> I think it's a little bit of both. I think there's some some of those um, type of plays that are you know built for a certain situation, short yardage, goal line, um, or or it kind of just comes up in the flow of the game, or or maybe 
earlier in the game, there's a couple of looks. We go, ooh, you know what? That this one is available now, or we should. They gave us the look that we were looking for. So there's a little bit of um, just kind of getting the feel for the game, but then also you absolutely have some up that are just situational calls that you saw on tape that you can use. When you're practicing those kind of plays, do you find it gets the players' attention more easily because it's not, you know, the norm? Sure, it's it's fun. You know, when you present them, put them on the big screen, and show them the tape and show them the looks, you, you definitely get guys excited about it. How many? How much of it is you? I don't know, inventing stuff, and how much of it is like, I saw this at Northwestern, I saw this at Kansas City, and like you have a notebook full of them. That I think I think that's that's good. I think that's the beauty of our staff is that it's we're kind of a melting pot staff from a bunch of different teams and have a ton of experience. And so the collaboration part of that is, you know, you might see a look presented to the staff, and someone might already have experience in that and kind of know where maybe the bones are buried on the play, whether good or bad, and then you can kind of prepare, show. Add, add something from someone else. So that's been the best part about this staff is these guys are super creative and they're really collaborative as far as the knowledge and um, you know breadth of uh, Daniel, football Daniel, they know. Yeah. Daniel checked down to Andy Reid play last last week. Uh, what what made you which, put, play, which play are you talking about? Oh, uh, this is in the third quarter. I just heard okay. him say Andy Reid, Andy Reid. Oh, oh, I got you. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what makes you put that in? Is that just kind of your tribute to him that you put that in? No, we talked about it as a staff. Like we, we have a bunch of names for our plays um, at the line of scrimmage in the huddle. So you know, we, we we try to make some word association things with it. But you know, that was one that us and the staff thought was appropriate for that play. With a young pass rusher like Trayvon Walker. Is it so simply just saying, okay, we're gonna go with our best tackles, going up one-on-one, -on -one, or do you really emphasize trying to chip them off the line of scrimmage? Is that something that you guys are thinking about this week? Yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a part of every week. Um, and you look uh, across the league, I mean, there's there's good players on that side of the football every single week, and this week, there's no different. I mean, those guys are very, very talented pass rushers. They get off the edge, so you have to know where they're at on every single play. You guys uh, signed. Marcus Johnson to the 53 this week after the practice. Group. What kind of find has he been for you guys? I mean, he's played 40 plus snaps the last two games. Yeah, he's done. He's done a great job. I mean, he came in, in the practice squad and did a great job on the look teams. And Coach Groves was meeting with them extra and kind of getting them ready and um, up to speed with the offense. And you know, there was an opportunity for him to kind of step up. He had some speed, some really good ball skills. He's physical. He's a big guy and he's smart. And so, um, you know, we thought. That was a good decision, and he's done a great job with, with his opportunity. We've seen, a, we've seen less of the, the last couple weeks, probably design runs to, with Daniel. How much of that would you say is just uh, scheme and you know game plan, or how much of that was because you're trying to you know get him healthier to get him you know off the, yeah. the ankle, knee, whatever? Yeah, uh, I think um, it's a little bit of both. I think you know you want to be careful just to make sure you're not. You know, make sure he's right. But I think that's that, that element of his game is something that what's what makes him special is his ability to get out, and it certainly causes issues for defenses. You know, you see, uh, you know, you see guys they're they're aware of him, and, and I think he's doing a good job of making those decisions, getting up, getting down, getting what he can. He's making smart decisions in that aspect in the in the run game, and I think he's an element that you don't really you don't want to take it away fully, but. Just be smart and calculated. I say it because it seems like you're waiting for specific spots, like you know, in bigger spots. You're like you're not just using it, you know, in first quarter, you know, random first or second down, you know, near midfield or whatever that you're saving them. Is that something you think about that you factor into the equation as well? Yeah, I think I think it fits into the flow of the game. I think you know we're trying to design the openers. You know, you think about what has the defense presented. What have we presented in the past? So you try to build all that together, and um, sometimes you get to them, sometimes you don't. But they're they're at the front of my mind.